So welcome to our club. Today I'm going to talk about um, how do you make a, an R bioconductor package for um, the conference, the BioC conference. Um, so I have a few notes here that um, I think you can access now, unlike last week where I forgot to give uh, access permissions. Um, and so today, if you don't have these packages, you can go ahead and install them. We're going to use the use this and buy a see this packages um, in your R terminal. Okay. So uh, two weeks ago, I presented on how you make an R bioconductor package for Experiment Hub. Um, I haven't actually processed the video and uploaded it to YouTube, but um, uh, we do have the notes available. Um, and Two weeks ago, I mentioned that like um, that we had two already prior bio CDs related sessions from the past. So um, one of them was about some development issues you might face when making packages, and another one was about how do you actually start using bio CDs. So both of those videos might be relevant if you are uh, further interested in the material from today. So let's look at this one over here. Um, so, um, Sean Davis, who, um, used to work at NIH and uh, now works in, um, I forget what institution in, in Colorado, um, he's been part of, um, Biconductor for a long time and has played a strong support role answering questions on the Biconductor support website as well as having access to like these supercomputers from an age. And so he took charge of building a template uh, for how to build a bioconductor worship package. Um, so he has a full like example here, like um, an option you could do is um, fork this repository and then start editing the different files, looking inside of it. Um, so that that's an option you could do, um, uh, but we'll we'll learn how to uh, make this um, uh, basically from scratch using uh, BioCities. Um, and so the idea of a bioconductor worship package is that at the end you have a Docker image for uh, the package already installed, and then all of the dependencies. Um, um, and then once you have that, then users will be able to um, basically access it um, using a specific password that you're going to choose and a username. Now, um, what you also get you, if you copy all, everything from this uh, repository is that it will build a package down uh, website for your package um, that shows the same information here from that readme. Um, um, that looks, you know, pretty nice, right? Um, and so there's a full guide here, a full vignette of how do you build your package? Um, and so he suggests here, like, just um, forking it, uh, sorry, create a, create a repository from this template, um, and then start modifying different files. Um, so this user guide, I would say, is, um, um, is enough if you kind of know what you're doing already, right? Um, so this is one option you can follow. Um, but you might be asking yourself, um, you know, what is Docker? Um, you might not know what Rocker is or the bioconductor bio Docker uh, images, what they are. So Docker itself, um, the idea of it is um, you make these like basically these virtual machines that contain what you want. Um, and then people can download that virtual machine and run it on their computer. And that way they like have it, the exact same uh, development environment um, that you specified. So this makes it easier for end users because in, I mean, in theory, it makes it in, uh, easier for end users because then they don't need to um uh install software and try to make it such that they're like 
software, it looks exactly the same as the one you have on your computer. Um, um, and doc, Docker images have become quite popular also with the cloud because at that point in the cloud, you're renting these random machines. Um, and so if you deploy like a Docker image, um, uh, so the Docker image is like this, the name for a specific um, um, virtual image. Um, so if you deploy it on the web, on like on um, on the cloud, then you are basically controlling like what that machine will have um, available. Um, so it's become very popular. Um, um, and if we go back to Sean's manual over here, at the very top, the fifth step that he has on the readme says like, oh, it uh, makes the Docker image and with this install our package that you're building and all these dependencies. But then it also deploys, deploys it to like a specific loca location other people can use. And so we check that um, URL. There's quite a bit of information here, but I'll just scroll um, over here near to the end. And you'll see here that like, um, you can, uh, if we use this Docker build push action, this is how we're going to be able to um, to share our the our result in our package and install uh, dependencies and make a um, a Docker um, image. Um, so this will be something that this piece of code here at the bottom is something that we'll recognize in a little bit. Now. The Docker project is great for things in general, but then uh, uh, <clears throat> there's also the Rocker project over here. Um, and so the idea of the Rocker project is that these are Docker containers or images for the R environment. Um, and so this was spearheaded by um, Carl Bottinger. Um, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his last name correctly. Um, and then uh, Noam Ross. Uh, both of them are, um, are part of our open side. And then Dirk Edel Butel, um, who has made a lot of like um, R packages related to C, right? I think he's the author of the, the RCVB package, for example. Um, so all three of them teamed up together. Maybe other people not shown here. Um, and they build Rocker. Um, and the idea is that like they create these Docker images that have R Studio installed already um, um, and R basically, right? And so if you wanted to, you could like just run this command if you have Docker installed and then you will have an image that has R Studio with the latest R base installed and then you can start like playing around with it, right? Um, um, so that's quite nice, but it's, you know, as you know, with Bioconductor, there's more things that we need for installing packages. Um, and so Bioconductor itself has its own Docker containers. Uh, they're built on top of Rocker, um, uh, but they also contain like all of the necessary system dependencies for installing any of the Bioconductor packages. Um, so, um, just like we saw here for Rocker, where there's this Docker run command, and then you say, like, <clears throat> we're using this R base image. In this case, we're going to be using the biconductor forward slash biconductor Docker colon either devel or a particular release version, for example, release underscore three underscore 14. Um, so Backconductor hosts, all of, um, I mean, or creates and maintains these um, these uh, Docker images, which are built on top of Rocker, which are like the ones that are like uh, more um, useful for us. Because once you style, for example, the Backconductor Docker develop uh, image, you have on that virtual machine all the um, all the system requirements from all Backconductor packages. And so that's a lot of system requirements because there's like around 2,000 software packages in Bioconductor, right? 
And some of them might have some system dependencies, like, I don't know, Python or other things, right? Um, and so you'll have all of that already is available. Um, and so the idea is that we're going to use these bioconductor Docker images. Um, and then inside of a bioconductor Docker image, let's say from release 314, inside of it, we're going to build our package um, and then install the dependencies for a package. Um, so that at this point, we're going to install the R packages that we depend on because all of the system dependencies are already contained on the Docker image. Um, so we're just building on top. We're just um, imagine that you have like this multi-layer cake. We're just adding the last little piece on top of that, a multi-layer cake, right? The, uh, the bottom part is Docker. The middle part is Rocker. Then the top part is the back conductor Docker. And we just added the like little like cherry on top type of thing. Um, um, and so how does this actually come into play for users? So Sean Davis, he's the um, author and maintainer of something called uh, Orchestra. If you Google it as Orchestra Space Bioconductor, you'll find the link for this. Um, and um, basically, uh, Sean has um, connected cloud computing um, that um, I think he has credits for he like um, or like previously he had access to machines and at NIH that uh, maybe not everyone was using. And so here you can find um, any of the older uh, workshops from the past. So for example, if I search speak easy, you'll notice that there's a workshop for it. If, um, the link to it is um, the link to this repository where there's like an R package that um, Nick and I built. Um, I think also um, Josh uh, created some of the material in here. Um, and so this R package at the end uh, creates a Docker image. Um, and we can click here on the launch button. Um, now, uh, this can take a bit of time. I had already ran it, I think last night. Um, and so oh, I click on that too fast. So what Orchestra will give you is access to a particular URL. Um, it will be personalized for you. Um, and it only runs for eight hours. After that, like the cloud machine sunsets it and deletes it, right? Uh, that way, like um, Sean Davis, who's maintaining Orchestra, doesn't have to pay for a lot of cloud computing that you're not using. Um, and so this link over here, we can um, open it on a new tab or we can click on the launch workshop button. I'll just open it on a new tab so we can have the previous one on the side. And you'll notice here that at this point now we're using um, our studio and we need a username and password. And so by default on orchestra, the username and password is gonna be our studio. I'll just paste that. Um, um, and so at this point we log in and we are um, running our studio on this cloud machine that has all the bioconductor system dependencies installed plus a, a bunch of packages, um, including if we scroll all the way down, we'll find uh, the S, we'll find this, um, I'll make me, I'm gonna make this bigger. Um, we see here that the Speak Easy Workshop 2020 package. That is a package name that like Nick and I and Josh created. Um, and it was for the European Bioconductor 2020 conference. Um, um, so it has that package installed and then all the other packages that we import them. For example, you see here the session info package, which is one of the ones that we like to use, right? Um, and so not only can you access that, this image is frozen in time. So it's using the bioconductor image from the 3.12 release. So even though the, the current release is uh, 3.16, um, this, um, there's, there's no need for maintaining this Docker image. It like already works um, as it should for that version. Although like VIOC manager is telling us like, hey, don't you want to update to the version 3.16? You shouldn't do that over here. <laughs> 
right? Like um, it won't have all the system dependencies that you need for it. Um, so at this point, like uh, the package is available and installed. And so like a user could type, um, if I could type uh, library, uh, Right, they can load our package that we made, and it can um, it loads because it has all the um, our packages that it depends on already available. Right um, now, um, uh, Black and Doctor um, uh, worship packages. The main component of them is vignettes, and so if you know the name of the package, which um, you might have not known it, but you can kind of see it here on the files. We can see that um, uh, we have this like speakeasy worship 2020.r project. So we can guess it from there. Or if you click on the description file, the first line contains the package name. So if, if from either of those scenarios, when you open any other um, bioconductor um, worship uh, package, um, you can then type help package equals to the package name. Um, that will be the equivalent of going on the RC to help panel and um, um, typing the package name or going under packages and finding also the package and then clicking on it. Whichever way you do it, um, uh, either from the command line, which I'll do right now here on the left side, whichever way you do it, you end up on this um, help page. And you'll notice that you have this link to the user guides, package vignettes, and other documentation. So I'll click on that link. And some workshop packages have more than one vignette. This one only has one. Um, so let's click on it. Um, and not only does, does it contain the vignette and all the package dependencies, the vignette here is, has already been compiled. So it already looks nice. Um, and so the nice thing about this is a user can just, um, for example, select some lines here and press Control Enter on Windows or Command Enter on Mac and uh, execute the lines of code from the vignette on the console. So when you're teaching, um, this is like um, how um, the people that are in your workshop can follow you and um, and run some of the same commands that you have, right? So this speakeasy workshop was a 90 minute uh, long one. So it was um, a long format workshop. Um, and um, maybe some of you, I think maybe Diana, Nick, and Renee, who are thinking of submitting a, another speakeasy workshop, but a shorter version of it might be interested in playing around with this one, right? Using the orchestra. Um, I actually forgot we had it. <laughs> until I looked at it recently. Um, and so this is how you would uh, open the vignette on our studio on, uh, from using this orchestra machine. Um, because if you use the other command, uh, browse vignettes uh, package equals the package name, that will like allow you to like, for example, see the HTML here on the side, but like um, our studio actually, our studio server is actually blocking that. So that would normally work on your on your computer, but it doesn't work here, right? Uh, so that's why we need to uh, navigate to the help of the package in order to find these uh, vignette, um, these render vignette. Um, cool. So um, that's a background on, on this uh, Bioconductor Worship uh, packages. Um, but at this point, let's start to build ours. So um, just like two weeks ago, we're gonna use the create package function from use this. Um, and then, um, so we, if I just open that page again for a reminder, right? When you, when you use that create package function, the main thing you need to do is, is specify a path for it. Um, so I'll, I'll work on my home directory when I, I make this package or, um, or my desktop actually. Um, then after that, I told you last time that um, um, BioCities has this function called use BioC package templates. 
Um, so we can use that um, um, directly. Um, um, and this will create four uh, scripts that will help us set up the full package. Um, so we'll actually have to uh, go through these four scripts today. Um, but in particular, there's one function that we're going to use in, in, in the scripts called the um, uh, use by C GitHub action. So this will need to do it because you'll notice here there's a Docker option, which by default is false. In this case, when we use it, we'll have to say that Docker will be true. Um, and that's how we can uh, start setting up um, um, the GitHub Actions workflow to create a, a Docker image with our package installed and all of that. Um, and um, that function uh, will create a little um, um, GitHub Actions workflow file um, on the YAML format. And if we look at the template for it, at the very end of it, you'll notice how it's using the Docker build push action version one. Um, and so we go back to what I showed you earlier here. We're, we're using that same um, Docker build push action. Um, so um, this is how we'll be able to, to make that um, Docker image at the end. So it's just a little piece there um, that is needed. Cool. Um, so before I make um, some like um, an example right now, I'll just put here a few links to uh, older versions of, of uh, workshops that we have. I already showed you the Speakeasy workshop one. Um, I also have a recount workshop that I used to teach. Um, and so the latest version was the tw is the 2020 version where we look at the code. We can see how we have. Um, the description file and all of that necessary for for the package so um you have a few examples that you can um, um try to adapt from right um when you make your um, your workflow package cool let's so to open our studio mm -hmm. So let's just use this, create package. Um, um, so <clears throat> I just chose a name for it. Um, called example by C worship 2020, 2023, sorry. Um, and so this function, um, create package, uh, created a directory under my desktop, then set an active project on it, created the R directory, a description file, um, a namespace file, the R studio project file, made sure that it's uh, R building north, um, did a few other things and then finally opened it on a new window. Uh, so at this point, I don't need this um, console window anymore, but um, I'll leave you here the the the, the command I use for creating it. Um, so once we have created it, I'll use BioCities um, use BioC package templates. Um, so this uh, function over here just created the dev directory, made sure it's ignored, and created four different scripts that we can use. So let's go to the first script over here. Um, mm -hmm. um, so this first script um, tells you like to install all these packages that will help you make packages. Um, so I already have them in my, installed in my computer, so I don't need to run that. Uh, also, um, uh, tells you to install the BIOS C style package from Bioconductor. And um, it asks you to run the available, available, the available function from the available package to check that this package name does not you know, exist. Um, and so I chose a name that I think, uh, you know, 
it's very likely that it doesn't exist already. And you can see this script over here ends in line 59, telling you to use the use this function to create the package, which we already did at that point, um, and then create the templates. So it's a bit of like, um, um, and make sure you have here like all the commands that you use for for getting to this point for creating the package so that's what this first script does uh, the last line here line 70 uh, what it does is it uses the rc api package to help you navigate um, to the second script if you wanted to you can use a line number two here in the second script to go back to the first script um, um, so okay. once we have that then we'll say like okay we want to ignore um get ignore the our project file so i'll do that here um this is normally needed when you submit your package to bioconductor for a worship package we don't really need it um so but i mean mm, yeah um i'll run it anyways um then we need to make sure that we're using git um um so this command over here will like make a first commit for us and remember use this always gives you three options when you when it's prompting you to ask uh, to answer something two of them are going to be no one of them is going to be yes but, but they, they use all these different synonyms and randomly change the order in order to force you to actually read so in this case option one is the yes option so i'll do that um so i'll make a little commit and then it says oh do you want to restart your r studio window because if you notice over here on this bottom panel, I only have the environment history connections build and tutorial panels. I don't have a Git uh, panel. So I'll say yes to that, which in this case is the yup option, number one. Um, and um, it's reloading our studio. Um, and now we have the Git panel. So, um, oh. So now we we're version controlling. Um, there's a few steps here. You haven't set up your token before, but eventually in line 43, we can use, use GitHub. And so um, I showed you this command two weeks ago, which uh, basically creates um, a repository on your GitHub account. It needs to know your information. And so it says here, like, is it okay to commit things? I will say yes, which in this case is yep, option number three. Um, and so now I created under my GitHub account this um, our little R package, right? Um, the R package here, we know it's an R package because it has the description and a namespace file, basically. Um, cool. So at this point, we're, we're done with the second script. We can navigate to the third one. Um, the third one is the is the longest one where there's going to be a lot of different things we need to do, and so we'll make sure that we use a bioconductor uh, friendly description file. Um, and so we already had one. Um, so it's like, do you want to replace it? I'm going to say yes, which in this in this case is the for sure option option number one. Um, um, and so once that is done, uh, the the scripts here tell you like, oh, you should uh, manually edit it. So I'm gonna use the RStudio API package to open that description file. Um, and so we have our package name, we need a little title, which um, I told you last time, it has to be a single sentence um, uh, without any non appeared. Otherwise you're gonna uh, get an error later. So we'll say like, mm, Um, um, it already knows who I am in this case. You might need to complete that if you're doing it from scratch. Uh, and then it needs like um, at least two sentences here for a, a longer description. Um, so I'm just putting some random stuff there. Um, cool. Um, so that description kind of looks complete at this point. Um, um, um next uh the, this uh, core files and number three script 
is telling us we need a readme file. So we'll use BioCities to create that readme. Um, um, and for example, line 23 here, we can edit it a bit to We could edit things a little bit. Um, uh, and eventually you can edit it even more, right? Um, so I won't go into editing this readme file any longer than that. Um, and once we have that readme RMD file, we can actually create the MD file using the tools build readme, which installs a local copy of the package. Um, so that takes a little bit. Um, it will take longer if your readme actually runs some um, time intensive code. We'll make our little news file. Um, um, so that was pretty fast. I just ran line 48 over here that makes a news file. Um, 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 and I'll just say, we just added the news file. Um, cool. Um, all these other things about a code of conduct and support and all of that are not ne necessary really for, for us, but I'll just make them um, in case we want people to ask us questions uh, about this workflow later. Um, I even made a citation file too, right? Um, so all of these files, you could edit them if you want to, but um, it's not necessary. We'll say that it's an experimental package, use the badges for, for it. Um, use also the GitHub Actions badge. Um, now, normally you're making an R package that um, uh, you're gonna test. Um, you would, we would have unit tests. This is a workshop package. We normally don't have unit tests on them. So I'm gonna skip line 65 to 68. And then at this point, I'll rebuild the readme because we added a few batches for it. Um, uh, oh, there was an error. Read me. Um, I guess. Um, oh, we needed a title here. So, um, citation file. Mm -hmm. Mm. Oh, this one also doesn't have a title. Mm. Um, all right, now it did work. Cool. Um, that error message looked pretty complicated, but I, I kind of guessed that it was because of um um the citation file we just made um earlier line 56 um okay so we don't have any um tests we skip that we do want to have a vignette though so um you could always change the name of the vignette um here when i call it like introduction to this package but you can call it something else later and so this command ran a bunch of things, added a lot of dependencies that we need for, for vignettes, um, and then created this uh, template vignette file. So um, here you need to type your name, uh, your institution, your email, Um, you don't need to change a lot of those options. It will cite everything. It says like, oh, if you want to get started, you might want to install the package, et cetera. Um, what is the required knowledge? Here, you, there's a few like edit things that you could do. How to ask for help, um, how to cite it. Um, an example, how you can cite things. And then at the end, like how you can 
um, it cites all of the packages that were used for making this one and uh, shows the code for, for making the vignette. So um, this is where you're probably, you're gonna spend the great majority of your time when you make a bioconductor uh, worship package. Um, so we'll come back to that a bit later. Um, um, so at this point, we're gonna use the bioCDs use GitHub action uh, function, but let's check, um, let's check the help file for it. Um, and so um, it has a test that option, which by default is gonna be false. So that's okay, but I'll just explicitly say that here, test that equals false, because we're not testing the package. Um, and then I'm gonna use the docker equals true option. So this is the only place where I'm, I'm actually editing some of these um, um, development scripts. Cool. So this just created the GitHub workflows directory and inside of it, it created this YAML file that specifies how to, how to um, um, build your package uh, with Docker images and like test it and all of that. So we go to files, go to .github, workflows you can open that file over here and so we can notice here that we have the run docker option we set it to true um the has does that was set to false um we still want to run package down and um um we could test our workflow package on ubuntu mac and windows um and it's gonna be tested on our version 4.2 with Bioconductor version 3.16, which if we look at the Docker image, we're gonna be using the release underscore three underscore 16 version. So all of that is pretty good. Um, um, it'll like run a bunch of tests, it'll install the dependencies, and at the very end, it'll try to deploy it to um, my um, uh, Docker account called um, El Cuyado Tor, and then uh, this will be the name of the Docker image that it deploys it to in the end. You will need a Docker Hub account, um, and you will need to have your Docker Hub username and password, but we'll get to that point in a little bit. Um, um, cool. Um, so you have an, a computer your Git, um, Git config, you'll need to do that. Uh, we'll make sure we use the nice uh, colors for our package on website. Um, and at this point, it, the warning says, please git commit before running the next function. So we'll do that. Uh, we have added a lot of files. Um, so I'll just select everything and say commit prior to deploying. What? Mm -hmm. um, made it too big, so hey there. Okay. Um, so let's give this a try and see if it works. Um, cool. So at this point, it's building all the HTML files for a little website. Um, and then he complained because it says like, we don't have this example worship package installed. So what I'll do is I'll go to tools, uh, sorry, uh, build, and then I'll select install package. So that was like uh, command, sorry, uh, shift command B uh, if we wanted to. Um, okay, let's give it another try. Mm -hmm. Build a news file. So this time it did finish the vignette. And now it just deploys things. So we go to uh, the repository. Um, we now have a GitHub pages branch, which we didn't have before. Um, and so in a little bit, we, let me go to the GitHub pages branch. Um, 
you can see there's this yellow button right now or orange. Um, and so it's trying to um, make the little website available. So in a, in a few seconds, it will probably be complete. Um, um, and so the URL for it will be my user, my GitHub username, eloquiatour.github.io forward slash the repository name. Um, so oh, it's complete now. Um, and so now we have our little package down website where we have the name of our package, um, what our information we had in the readme file, the citation, um, a bunch of links here. Um, um, we don't have any functions, so there's no manual, uh, sorry, uh, on the reference, we don't have any functions in our package. Um, so there's nothing there to report. But on the get started page, this is it's, uh, automatically loading the introduction to our um, package name, uh, vignette, where we see I have my name, institution, and email. So I didn't change anything here because sometimes it's easier to see the text in its final version. So you can see like um, if you edit something, how it will look, right? Um, so ideally, at some point here, you'll you'll start you'll start to edit a lot, right? And um, um, add the whole explanation of, of of what you're trying to teach. Um, so at this point, we have basically completed our um, our package um, or the first version of it. If we go to update, for example, these commands here are useful if you end up um, making any updates at some point to your package. Let's say, for example, that you um, uh, edited the readme file, the readme rmd file. So we need to run here DevTools build readme to update the readme.md file. Um, that might be something you'll need to use. You feel like automatic install your code at some point, et cetera. Um, if we had any um, R functions, we would need to like create documentation files for it. Um, so all of that looks pretty good. Um, if I push it now, um, and that will trigger the GitHub Actions workflow here. Like I want to trigger another one just by uh, making a commit for this um, um, non-default options. Um, but eventually this GitHub Actions workflow is gonna crash because we haven't set up, um, we haven't set up our Docker uh, password information yet, um, which is needed at the very end, right? Mm -hmm. So um, if we go to the Actions panel on GitHub, we'll notice that um, Right now, it's trying to run everything in our package on um, Ubuntu, Mac, and Windows. If we click on the Ubuntu version. At the very end, it's going to try to like uh, deploy it with Docker uh, build push action. Uh, but that's going to fail because it doesn't have the secrets. And so for that, we need to go to settings on this repository. Um, and um, over here where it says secrets and variables, we'll click on actions. Um, and then we need to create a new repository secret. So the, 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 the secrets here have to have its very specific names. So we go to, I'm gonna um, show these in two different windows. So we go to the um, um, actions file. We need a secret called docker underscore username. And I think mine is a liquid tour. I don't remember my, um, my docker hub. Oh, mine is a liquid. And then um, I'll add that secret. Um, and then we also need to create another secret, which um, in this case is your Docker password. Um, and I'm not going to screen share this. Um, mm -hmm.
Cool. So I just created that um, Docker password secret. Um, and um, I noticed that my username is not El Cuyado Tor, it's just El Cuyado. So that's well, I'll edit that there. Um, and so here I'll say like, Mm -hmm. So at this point, I'll push it. And so we won't be able to see it right now, but um, um, I'll take a few minutes for the full, like, um, um, back, uh, the, the whole GitHub Actions workflow to run um, and eventually, like, install all of the dependencies and all of that. Um, so we'll let that run in the meantime. Let me show you something else that you'll need to do which is, um, let's go to a vignette. Um, so we're gonna exit this so we don't get um, bombarded with messages there. I'll go to the vignette. And so let's say at some point, um, we want to use in our vignette the Lima package, let's say. Um, um, so I'll add a little chunk here. Um, Wait. Oh, here. I'll add a little chunk. Library of Lima. Um, so let's say we want to do that, right? Load Lima. Um, Lima is not available on our Docker image by default. So we need to make sure that it's installed. The way we can verify that will be installed is um, if we go to the console, we'll use the use this command, use package. Um, so in there, I'll say like, okay, we're going to import um, uh, Lima. Um, so what this will do is that it edits the description file. So we go to commit. Here, we'll notice that under the description file, it added imports Lima. Uh, so at that point, like Lima will be available. Now, you will, if we also want to cite it, we could be nice about it and then add a line like this one over here. I like to, I try to keep them um, on alphabetical order. So that'll be after, before R. And so Lima is um, a bioconductor package. So I'll do that. And if I scroll all the way here to lines 40 to 49, we have citation information about each of the packages. I'll say Lima citation, Lima, the first citation for it. So if I, if I, if I run that, uh, I'm gonna be citing their 2015 uh, Lima paper. Um, cool. Um, so this is how you would add any packages that your uh, worship is depending on. So let me make a comment about that. Um, so we just push at this point, that will trigger another GitHub Actions workflow. Um, and um, they take a few minutes to run. Um, um, Okay, so that will be all for today. 